Hey Booktube, I have a tag video for you, and this is the Brandon Sanderson tag. This was created by Christy Lewis from Dostoevsky in Space, and Christy and several other folks on Booktube are currently hosting a read-along called Storm Along 2020, um, and we are embarking to read uh, all of, or the first three books in the Stormlight Archives by Brandon Sanderson, starting with The Way of Kings. Uh, each of these books we are taking two months to read, and this is in preparation for uh, the fourth book, with Rhythms of War, which comes out um, in November. I believe, it was, I believe it comes out on November 17th, which is my birthday, which is how I remember that. Anyway, um, and so Christy Lewis created this tag um, to go along with uh, the read-along that is currently happening. Uh, if you have not read these books, I highly encourage you to do so if you like high fantasy. Um, even though they are massive, they are really great reads. Not only are they fun, but they also have a lot of concepts to think about. Um, aspects of religion, for one thing. Also some philosophy type issues. Um, and I, yeah, I highly encourage people to read these, even if they don't participate in the Storm Along Read Along. Um, these are still really good books to check out. So let's move on into the tag. Uh, the first question asks, Brandon wrote many early novels while working as a night clerk at a Provo hotel. What book kept you reading late into the night? And my go-to answer for this would be What Should Be Wild by Julia Fine. I read this book uh, a couple years ago, and I could not put it down. I stayed up well into the early morning hours finishing this book, um, and I absolutely adored it. I feel like I'm due for a reread of this because I just loved it so much. Um, so this is definitely a book that kept me up late, although I stay up pretty late anyway, whether I'm reading or not. Um, but... What Should Be Wild by Julia Fine. This is a really fantastic book. If uh, you haven't read it already, I highly recommend it. Um, and then question number two asks, Brandon's complex magic system set his fantasy apart. What subject do you love to read about in all of its complexity? And that would have to be genetics. I'm holding up the gene by Siddhartha Mukherjee um, as sort of a prop, um, but definitely genetics. I am fascinated by genetics. I ate this book up when I first read it, and I've read a lot of other books about uh, genetics since then. I just find it fascinating. Um, I can't get enough of how they've decoded, you know, the genome and how they can uh, lay out the genomes of various species and things. It's just all so fascinating to me. So definitely genetics. Um, a close second would be uh, anything having to do with astronomy or space. I love both of those topics, or both of these topics very much. Question number three. Brandon gets book ideas from watching other storytellers fail to execute a concept well. He figures out how to do it better. What two books handle the same concept in strikingly different ways, and which did you prefer? I don't really have an answer for this one. I thought about it, and I couldn't think of anything, so this is going to be kind of a punt for me, um, because I just, nothing was coming to mind. Um... There's probably something I just I just can't think of what it is at the moment. So we're going to move on to question number four. Uh, Child Brandon was recommended several books about dogs that die. <laughs> As a result, he became a reluctant reader. Please share a formative good or bad childhood reading experience. Most of my childhood reading experiences were very positive. Now, if we get into uh, high school or even like middle school, um, it gets a little bit more dicey, especially high school, where so much of the reading that we had to do for school was just atrocious. And we read books that nobody even talks about, like, not even, like, hidden gems. They were just books nobody cares about. Excuse me. Um, but for the most part with my childhood, I had a lot, a lot of positive reading experiences. Um, my parents encouraged me to read, and so... That was definitely something that was, uh, that contributed to my having a lot of positive reading experiences as a child. 
Um, I really loved the Bernstein Bear books when I was really little. And then as I got older, I liked things like the Boxcar Children. Um, and then my mom read to me the book Heidi by Johanna Spirey. I don't remember how old I was when we read this, but this is another one of those positive reading experiences I have because um, this was just a great book to read at the time. And I think I was old enough to know how to read, so I think my mom and I took turns like reading it to each other. Um, and so this was one of my positive reading experiences from when I was a kid. Um, and then also my dad read to me uh, The Hobbit by Tolkien when I was about, I think, like five or so, maybe a little older. And that's another positive reading experience as well. So like I said, I had a lot of positive experiences with reading when I was young. It was, it was when I got into my teen years and especially into high school where that really deteriorated because my high school English education was absolutely terrible. And yes, I am calling out my high school on how bad my English education was. So deal with it, across. deal with it. Um, okay, next question, number five. Uh, Brandon and several friends host the Writing Excuses podcast, and they frequently invite guests. Please tell us about a collaborative fiction project and what you thought of it. I, I don't have like a specific answer to this. Um, I've read some books that were collaborative works, some of which I have really enjoyed, and there were others that I was not a fan of at all. Um, I read one, and I can't remember the title of it because I didn't finish it, where it had different authors writing various sections of it. And it started out where I really enjoyed it, but then it got to a certain section with a certain author who I can't even remember now, and I hated the way that section was written, and after that it all just kind of fell apart for me. So I feel like these collaborative fiction projects, they can be good, but they can also be bad. Um, because you don't always have the same quality of writing um, with all of the authors. Uh, one of the collaborative fiction projects I can think of that I really liked was Good Omens that both Neil Gaiman and Terry Pratchett wrote. I really liked that book and I feel like they were both on the same page with their writing style. But there have been others that I've read, like the one I just talked about, that weren't so good in terms of their collaboration. Uh, because some authors wrote very well and I enjoyed what they had written for their section and then other authors made me put the book down and not finish it and return it to the library unfinished because I just couldn't get into their section whatsoever. <clears throat> Question number six. Brandon's first book, White Sand Crime, was rewritten and eventually converted into a graphic novel called White Sands. What book would you like to see in another format? I have qualms about this question because I don't necessarily always think that I want to see books in another format. Um, a lot of people will mention that they want to see a specific book and made into like a graphic novel or something and I'm not always a huge fan of graphic novels. So that one was kind of meh. Um, and then I don't watch a lot of TV or movies so I have a hard time saying I would watch a book that was made into a series or a movie. Um, I think if it was really, really well done, uh, I would probably watch a TV series of The Name of the Wind or The King Killer Chronicles by Patrick Rothfuss, if he ever finished them. Um, but it would have to be, like I said, extraordinarily well done for me to watch it. Um, and it couldn't go on for season after season, excuse me, after season. Um, because I would totally lose interest. It would have to be pretty brief, but yet impactful in that short amount of time. Uh, because like I said, I just, I don't have the attention span for TV or movies. Um, I get bored so easily with both of those things. And so that's why I don't watch much of either one. I would much rather read or go take pictures or do something else. And so... Yeah, this question, like I said, I have qualms with it because there aren't many other formats I would want to see a certain book in, purely because a lot of those other formats I just don't care about, for <laughs> lack of a better way of putting it. Let's see, number seven. Brandon writes very quickly, what prolific author or authors would you recommend? For this question, I went with Robin Hobb. Uh, Robin Hobb has 
multiple trilogies in the realm of the Elderling series. And they're all interconnected, and these are fantastic books. Um, and I highly recommend them to anyone who is interested in, um, again, high fantasy, well written. Um, there are also a lot of them are beasts, like Ship of Magic here is, but um, these are also just fantastic books um, to read as well. And like I said, she has a lot of them. And then there's also, she has another trilogy that is not part of this series, uh, The Realm of the Elderlings, but it's separate. Um, that one, it doesn't get as much discussion around it as uh, The Realm of the Elderlings books do, but again, these are all worth checking out. So Robin Hobb is my definite recommend. <clears throat> Brandon's, uh, question number eight, sorry. Brandon's Cosmere Universe or, uh, books are grounded in Platonic philosophy. What book or series gets you really excited about the source material? Oh, I'm trying to think here. I thought I had all these thought out, but apparently I don't. Um, I guess you could say any, like, fiction book uh, about uh, Tudor England. That gets me excited about uh, reading more about the Tudors uh, during that time period. Um, any book that uh, focuses on science or genetics, like I said, I'm, I'm fascinated by that as well. So anything like that. Um, I don't necessarily have a specific book in mind because I apparently skipped over planning for that question. But I guess my go-to answer would be any, any book that uh, is written about or during the time of the of Tudor England or even Victorian England. That, that gets me really excited about the material. Number nine, Brandon loves to show multiple sides of every issue and to contrast character values. Please share a book that handles controversy well. And for that, I went with a biography or an autobiography, and that is uh, John Shelby Spong's Here I Stand, My Struggle for Christianity of Integrity, Love, and Equality. And I have talked about John Shelby Spong in a previous video, and it was my favorite nonfiction books. And I absolutely love this man so much. Uh, John Shelby Spong was a bishop in Newark, New Jersey. Um, he has since retired. He is elderly now. He's, I think, in his 80s. Um, but this is his autobiography, like I said. And in this book, he talks about a lot of the controversies that he uh, saw when he was presiding over the church. And um, he talks about these controversies in such an eloquent fashion and in such a diplomatic fashion. You know, he doesn't go off the rails and just like start ranting and raving. He, he acknowledges that at one point in time, you know, he was against, say, like gay marriage. And then he talks about his coming to terms with the fact that, no, everybody should have the right to uh, marry who they love, no matter their, their sex, right? Um, and so he just handles all of these things very, very well. And this was just a great read because you see his sort of spiritual journey and his journey to uh, uh, Christianity that is focused on equality and integrity, uh, like his subtitle here says. And yeah, I just adore John Shelby Spong. He's, he's an amazing, amazing person. And he's also a very talented writer as well. Um, and I really, really need to reread this book. <laughs> I am holding it and I'm like, man, I just want to sit down and reread this. Because it's been mm, over four years since I've read this, probably at least five now. Um, so yeah, definitely want to reread this, and also, like I said, he definitely handles controversy very well within this book, and talking about his own struggles with the controversies that have faced the church. And then, question number 10, which is the last question, asks, Brandon Sanderson is a writing teacher, and unlike some writing teachers, he posts his lectures online for free. What free literature resource are you grateful for? And I'm going to echo uh, both Steve Donahue and Christy Lewis here and say BookTube. Um, long before I started a BookTube channel myself, I was watching many, many BookTube videos. 
um, and a lot of booktubers, and I just feel like this is a great resource to find new authors and new books and to hear what people are saying about uh, various types of books uh, because not everybody reads the same things that I do and that's awesome. Um, and so, yeah, I just feel like this is a great community to hear more about uh, books as well because it it's so diverse and there's part there's something of a conversation going on. Um, maybe diverse isn't the correct term to use, but diverse in terms of what people read from, you know, various genres to that type of thing. So yeah, these definitely booktube is something that I am, I am, uh, thankful for in terms of an online, uh, literature resource. I'm also, <laughs> uh, grateful for NetGalley as well, which is an online, uh, eGalley site where they will um, send out free e-galleys of books that are going to be published soon so that you can review them. Um, I've gotten a lot of books that way uh, and I really enjoy that experience as well. So yeah, booktube and netgalley. All right, that is the end of this tag. I don't know if I will tag anyone. If I do, I will leave it in the comments down below. Um, I will also leave a link to Christy's original uh, video where she created this tag. Um, if you are interested, you should really join in with uh, Storm Along 2020, reading the Stormlight Archives by Brandon Sanderson. Um, and that is all I have for you today. See you later, booktube.